Last weekend, the talents of the Milford High Theater Workshop were on display as the group put on their annual spring musical. I had the opportunity to speak to several members of the cast and crew at one of their final dress rehearsals to learn more about the theater workshop and get a sneak preview of their performance. Last week, Milford High School's Theater Workshop raised the curtain on their annual spring musical. This year, the group took on the challenge of producing the hit show Legally Blonde, the musical. I asked the show's director to explain the process of deciding the shows that the workshop performs. The Milford High School Theater Workshop, it is student run. They have an executive board and um, the way we choose shows is at the end of every year, kids submit nominations, they narrow it down to finalists and then they have um, a meeting where each group presents on their show and then the kids all vote. So again, it's, it's really all in their hands. So Legally Blonde was the winner and I was glad because this has actually been one of my favorite shows for years and years. So when I heard that they picked this one, I mean, I was maybe secretly rooting for this one during the meeting. I was like, yes. <laughs> This was Miss Gerard's first year directing with the theater workshop. She was more than excited to take the helm and bring one of her favorite shows to life on the Milford High stage. We had a, a really big group come out. Um, we usually do for the musical, but especially something as popular and as well known as Legally Blonde. Um, we had a really big turnout. Plus, the kids all, you know, get familiar with the shows over the summer, and so you know they have some ideas of what they want to do and, and word spread. So um, usually we have a first round of auditions where everyone comes on stage and we just have everybody sing, um, you know, something quickly just to you know hear what we're working with, and then the next day we'll narrow it down to callbacks for certain roles, and those you know kids will come back and they'll do um, they they'll have like a couple days to prepare the songs for the characters they're called for and uh, we also did some scene reading this time which we don't always do but the the characters are so big in this show and like specific to a certain degree that we really want to see that so it was a lot of fun it was a re it was hard to narrow it down the biggest character of all in legally blonde is of course Elle Woods the California sorority girl who tries to win back the love of her life by getting into Harvard Law School the challenge of taking on such an iconic role was placed in the more than capable hands of Milford High Junior Lindsay Barron. It's really fun. Um, I've never had a lead before, so this is like a really interesting part because not only is it a lead, but the show kind of centers around Elle Woods. So it's kind of a surreal feeling because I've usually been the one in the back, so being the one in the front is like a really cool feeling, I guess. Yeah. Oh my God. I Elle Woods is this show. She has to carry the whole thing. Um, not only is she in every single scene with a lot of big songs, big dances, I mean, she's got to be a true triple threat. She's got to be a great actress. You know, we really have to see this arc of Elle Woods, who starts out as this very sort of ditzy, typical valley girl type sorority girl um, whose only concern is, you know, getting back her man. That's the only future she sees for herself. You know, going through this, you know, character arc of discovering that she has brains and she has self-worth and initiative and, you know, she's a completely different person by the end of the show and it takes, you know, a really strong, talented actress to, to carry that through all the way from like, oh my God, to someone who is becoming a successful Harvard Law School graduate. I have all my costumes over there. I have my own rack, yeah. I have to have somebody help me through all my costume changes. It's kind of insane. Yeah, but usually I have like maybe like 30 to 50 seconds for a costume change. I'm just trying to make sure like I don't look a total mess when I go back out on stage. But yeah, it's fun. It's part of the show. Lindsay's character ends up with not one but two love interests over the course of the show, played by a pair of members of the class of 2016. Warner Huntington III is very pompous, very rich. Um, let's just say he got into Harvard based on his legacy rather than his actual intellect. And um, back at UCLA, before he went to Harvard, he was dating Elle. And right before he goes over to Harvard, he dumps her because his parents wanted him to get serious. And that's the reason that he uses for dumping her. This is the probably the biggest lead or the biggest role that I've had in any show. This is only my third show. I joined last year and I, I definitely liked being, you know, much more active in the shows than I have been before. Emmett Forrest, he is a graduate of Harvard Law School who is interning with Callahan, um, helping basically like a teacher's aide in his classroom and he works for the firm that Callahan is a partner on. He doesn't really understand like connections and such so when he's, he's dealing with Elle 
um, and kind of carrying her through her tough times and he's really falling in love with her, um, there's many points throughout the show where he's like, what is happening? Like, what's going on? And he, it shows that like, he really doesn't understand the whole concept of like being attracted to another person emotionally. And I think that it's just, he's a very awkward character to play, but it's a lot of fun. It's hard to say if there's a true villain in Legally Blonde the musical, but making a strong case as the show's bad guy is Callahan, the Harvard professor slash high-powered attorney. I don't think anybody will consider him sleazy up until the interaction that he has with Elle. Um, I've heard from a few people that he, you know, people watching him like the character right up until then. Um, as I know I did. When I was watching the musical, I, to like, I totally loved the character of Callahan, especially like in the, in the scene where he uh, stands up and says, you know, Elle, you just won your case, you know? He's like finally realizing that Elle's a smart and ca competent woman, and then, you know, that thing happens, and it's all thrown out the window. It was all, for a, it was all just a ruse. The benefit of putting on such a large-scale production is it provides a lot of opportunities for many different students to take part in the show. I would say um, definitely at least probably 80, 85 between cast and crew, and we also do have some students who play in the orchestra. So it is, it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a large organization, and again, the, the musical is always, you know, much bigger. It is often said that actors are the most superstitious of people, and the young actors that make up the Milford High Theater Workshop are no exception. Every time we put on a show, we all order t-shirts with the, you know, the same logo on them. We have a strict system for how you're supposed to deal with your shirt. Um, you're not supposed to look at it. In any of your five senses cannot interact with this shirt. You have to take it, not look at it, stuff it in your, in your things, and just don't even, just pretend it doesn't even exist until, you know, the Friday comes and you have to put it on. Uh, it's, like, it's like a weird bad luck thing, but, you know, I follow it to the letter. Um, and, you know, there's been a few instances in the past where some people have not followed that to the letter and then bad things have happened. I'm not going to go ahead on camera and say those th two things are linked, but you can't ignore the evidence. Legally Blonde played to packed houses for all three days of its run last weekend. The musical marks the end of another successful season for the theater workshop. But with many of the cast members returning to Milford High next year, the group is already setting their sights on what next season might bring. After this, um, you know, we'll have a little break, then, you know, we'll have our meetings at the end of the year to choose the shows for next year, and then start gearing up to do it all over again. I have no clue what we're going to do, but I'm really excited. I feel like we'll do something amazing no matter what we do. <laughs> A big thank you to Miss Gerard and the entire cast of Legally Blonde for giving me that great behind the scenes access. Now if you missed out on the chance to see the show live or you want to relive the experience all over again, you are in luck. We have already begun airing the full production over on our educational channel. You can check it out during any of its four viewing times throughout the week. It airs on Sundays at 4 p.m., Wednesdays at 2.30 and 8.30 p.m., and Fridays at 9 p.m. Hey everybody, this is Tim Coet. Make sure you check out full episodes of The Milford Informer on Milford TV. New episodes air every Friday night at 7.30 p.m. and then re-air frequently over the course of the weekend. Milford TV can be found on Comcast Channel 8 and Verizon Channel 38. And if you live in the Milford area and have an idea for a news story, you can contact us at news at milfordtv.net.